Good morning. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 13 in the Passion Translation. Some have said, I eat to live and I live to eat. But God will do away with it all. The body was not created for illicit sex, but to serve and worship our Lord Jesus, who can fill the body with himself. We are not created for food. We are not created for sex. We are created for God. I took time out to do a lot of data collection on why people cheat. And I have like 10 uh, different reasons I was able to make out of those data. People wrote different reasons why people cheat in relationship as a couple. Why do men cheat? About 10 different reasons. I'll go after them, I'll, I'll pick them one after another, and then I will ask you to justify if that is enough reason to cheat. All right? Number one, people cheat for lack of commitment to their present relationship. That was the first thing the person said, that he thinks people cheat because of lack of commitment. That is true. Uh, that looks like a very polished reason. When you, are not com when you are not having a committed relationship as a girl or as a boy or as a man or as a woman, there's nothing at stake, then you are free to cheat. Then I'll take you back again to say, cheating is not to your partner alone. In fact, when you cheat, your partner is the third person you are cheating on. The first person is God. The second person is you. Your partner is the third person. Either presently you are married or you're going to be married thereafter. So that's not enough reason. Number two, lack of sexual satisfaction with your present partner. People say, hey, the man is not satisfying me or the woman is not satisfying me. I quickly explain what this means. It means if I have a cup of water here and the water I drank it is not satisfying me, but there's another cup of water that has a poison inside, but has sugar, has uh, milk, very sweet, but it's poison. You're saying because this cup of water is ordinary water cannot satisfy me, I should drink the one that is a full, good water, sweet water, but it has a poison. That's what it means. So if sexual satisfaction is what we are created for, like the Bible is saying, the body is not created for illicit sex. So that should not be good enough reason why we should cheat. Number three, open-minded attitude towards sex outside of marriage. Many people believe it's a normal thing. I'm not talking of unbelievers. I'm talking of Christians. I'm talking of people who know the Bible, who think it's a normal thing. Is their mind is open because as far as they're concerned, we're living under the grace and not under the law. But that's like wasting the grace of God upon your life. You lose more by going outside your marriage than staying. Even when it is painful, it's difficult, but you know you are keeping yourself safe. Number four, different kind of sexual need. Um, uh, this one is not doing this well. This is the kind of sexual need I need. Whatever it is, it's not good enough. Number five, appetite for sexual encounter with others. People want to taste what other people look alike. You know, someone says one is uh, Coke, the other one is uh, uh, Fanta. But in all honesty, that is not enough reason to shit. Because you desire to have it with other people. Now, this is a question. When you ask uh, multiple sexual partners, what do you gain from it? Apart from the three meanings, which is nothing. That's not what your body is created for as a believer. Our body is created to serve, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we are new creatures. We are not like all other people. Our life is not like every other people in the street. Number six reason why people shit. Lack of emotional satisfaction with current partner. When they are not having a connection with their present partner, that's why if your marriage is having an issue, work on it. Sit down and see a counselor, all right? Or go see your pastors and talk with them. And if you are having dissatisfaction, it's something you should open up or talk with each other and say, you know, guy, we are not satisfying you anymore. And then if you, are, if you have a partner who is saying you are not satisfying him or her, it is your right to take time to uh, sort out, okay, so uh, what are you talking about? I'm not talking of over-demand partners, people who are seeing sex as water and food. That's, you can never satisfy their urge simply because they've gone too far that they need deliverance from evil sexual habits that they've got themselves into. 
And they shouldn't use it against their partner because only God knows where you got yourself loose that you cannot be satisfied anymore. You keep eating, keep eating, eating. You are never satisfied. They call it gluttony. All right? That's addiction. It's not the um, uh, um, fault of your partner that you got yourself into that. So you should learn how to treat yourself. It's like being sick. You treat yourself and come into a normal sexual need that can be satisfied. Number seven, feeling of insecurity or low self-esteem. Majorly, if you have a low self-esteem as a girl, you want to sleep with all the men in the street so that you can feel like, okay, maybe you are beautiful. That's why they are sleeping on you. Most of the time, they finish sleeping on, uh, with you and go and clean and go and wash their teeth because they just, they just see you as one of those loose girls in the street. And that happened to men too. Who think the more women or more ladies they, that are involved in their life makes them have ego. Rather, it's a showcase of your insecurity or low self-esteem. Number eight, financial, family, and work prayer. If you sleep with men for money, you're a prostitute. If you speak a tongue. If you sleep with women for money, you're a prostitute. Even if you preach the Bible. Yeah. So, if financial gain is a reason... He said, hey, you don't know what I need. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Go and walk. You're just lazy. You lose more than what anybody can pay you for sleeping with him. Simple truth. Number nine, thrill of the chase. So people have this idea that when they chase girls or chase guys, is what makes them the real thing. Not knowing that they're demonized. You need deliverance. You need to go for prayers. You need to fast. You need to give yourself to the word of God. You know how to come out of such uh, sex slavery. Number 10, the opportunity that presents itself. There are people who shit because they saw the opportunity. Now, this is the truth. It's not because you saw the opportunity. You've been shitting in your mind. So you just saw the opportunity to quickly grab and you, you just quickly go for it. Now, these are 10 reasons that I got in the data collection on why men shit. But this is a question I'm going to ask you. Is there enough good reason to shit on God, to shit on your destiny, and to shit on your partner? I'd like you to please help me write under this video. There is never a good reason why anyone should shit on God, shit on themselves, and shit on their partners. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.